Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for Pokemon Premier League Season 4, Division 1, Week 4. Two fours in there. I'm, I'm liking it. Four is a pretty nice number all around actually. Anyways though, up against the Birmingham Spritzy who are coached by the Onesie Bennett, who is Alex. If you have not seen his content, it is highly entertaining. His information will be in the description if you would like to check him out. And it is with my utmost recommendation that you do so. I actually am getting this battle up late. I do apologize for that. Time zones are a thing. And of course my work schedule has been crazy lately with lots of 11 hour shifts back to back. So this is the first time we're getting to battle, thank goodness. And we are battling very, very late, which is good because then I'm not keeping him up very late. To briefly go over the team that I'm bringing this week, uh, that's, that's gonna be the purpose of these first little 10 minutes here, hopefully. You can see that things that he has access to, and holy crap, this draft, it's basically impossible to switch into a combination of his Pokemon, um, especially Volcanion and uh, Mega Latios. They get so many different coverage options, it's very difficult to switch things into them. So I'm really going to take a different approach to this battle of kind of pivoting around and trying to figure out what's his fastest thing, seeing if I can pick that off and then kind of go from there. Now, as a rule for this battle, I am actually not really expecting him to bring some of these Pokemon. Uh, I'm really only expecting the Mega Latios, the Volcanion, the Ferrothorn, the Thunderous, the Hariyama, and the Gengar. He could bring Sandslash over Hariyama, or he could also bring uh, Grand Bull over Hariyama. But Hariyama just kind of can sit in against my team and be a general nuisance outside of something like uh, Gardevoir. And even then, Hariyama gets Bullet Punch and Heavy Slam for Gardevoir, so that's not even uh, taking that into account. But I don't think he'll bring some of these other options such as Scyther, Gigalith, or Lickitung just because of my entry hazard options. Uh, he knows I have access to Weavile, of course, with the priority Ice Shard, so I'm thinking he's going to want to limit his uh, Ice Weaknesses in this battle. And also Hariyama makes a, near, a very nice switch into Weavile. Granted, I can go for a low kick to get some good damage off there too. But let's go over these spreads really quickly. First up, Weavile is one of my main win conditions for this match. Uh, Weavile is very fast, which is very nice. I only have enough speed on it to outspeed max speed Mega Latios. Uh, because that's really all I need. Um, there's a good chance that he can run Volcanion with the Scarf. Mega Latios can run Dragon Dance. Thunderous can run Agility. Hariyama gets priority. Uh... Outside of that, I don't think I need much more speed than that. Um, Gengar is a thing too, but Gengar can't take a lot of those hits. And Weavile actually has pretty decent special defense, so it can take hits like Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb from Gengar pretty pretty well. Now, um, I did put Low Kick on there just as a secondary way to hit Volcanion, Ferrothorn, Hariyama, to a lesser extent the Grand Bull that might try to switch in here. Gigalith also nicely gets hit by it. It doesn't do much to lick a tongue because it's so light. But the idea is to save Weavile for the back or bring it in if one of my teammates go down or rather win because something is going to go down to these offensive threats. Weavile should be able to pick something off uh, by coming back in. Um, interestingly, Weavile with this HP investment can also live something like a Thunderous T Modest Thunderbolt too. So having the extra HP in there is actually going to play a little bit of a part, I believe. Now on Gardevoir, this is going to be my main tech-ish counter to the Volcanion and the Thunderous. To a lesser extent, something like Mega Latios, if he happens to not bring Dragon Dance, I think he's going to bring Dragon Dance, but if he doesn't, this will work out great. Uh, Moonblast, Side Shock, Thunderbolt, and Focus Blast hits his entire team at least neutrally, if not super effectively. Uh, Assault Vest is nice with Trace because then I can pick up the water immunity for a Volcanion, I don't have to worry about getting burned by steam eruption. And he's forced to use uh, Fire Blast, which won't do nearly as much um, coverage against my team. It's a lot easier for my team to switch into Fire Blast than it is for my team to switch into uh, steam eruption. So this will kind of force him into that option if he goes for Sludge Bomb with either the Volcanion or Sludge Wave with Thunderous or Gengar. Assault Vest Gardevoir can take those hits as well and strike back, usually one hit KOing. I have a serious nature that is supposed to be timid. Um, bloop, let's correct that. Uh, you can tell often I use Showdown. But um, just kind of trying to keep some of those things in mind. 
with 36 special attack EVs, I can get a one-hit KO on Mega Latios most of the time, uh, barring any type of bulk investment. Uh, Thunderbolt is there just for Volcanion, and I hate Focus Blast, but if I'm in a situation where that's my only way to hit Ferrothorn, I need to be able to hit it. And I didn't want to go Hidden Power Fire just because Focus Blast gets a little bit better coverage against this team uh, than Hidden Power Fire does. Next teammate is going to be Blastoise with a very nice speed investment. This Blastoise actually outspeeds max uh, speed Volcanion and then the rest into bulk to try to help soak up some of those hits a little bit better. Uh, this Blastoise will also be able to nicely outspeed something like Hariyama or Granbull or Gigalith if he happens to bring any of those options because then I can get really nice strong hits off on them. And uh, this investment also will allow me to live something like Draco Meteor and followed up by an Outrage, something weird from Alatius. I can live those options as well. I really have to scout a lot. And Blastoise is going to be here to try to punch some holes in things before he kind of builds up a lot of momentum. Um, I really do see Scarf Thunder is coming for this battle. So uh, if it's Scarf, that's good too, because Blastoise with that much investment on HP can actually take a Thunderbolt from uh, Thunderous. So um, it also forms as another secondary check for Volcanion in case I just have to switch something in. I don't really want to put myself in that position, which brings us to our next teammate, which is actually Magneton. Uh, I happily bred a Hidden Power of Fire Magneton with max speed EVs, although the rest of the EVs are kind of meh. But with um, max speed, I can at least speed tie the Volcanion, um, make him worried about me being Scarfed or something like that. I do need to be on the lookout for Fire Blast, because that'll, that'll still one-hit KO Magneton uh, with the Eevee Alight without more investment. Um, here, I don't know why this says Hidden Power Grass. Showdown has messed with my stuff, yo. Uh, this is supposed to be fire, that way I can trap the Ferrothorn if I am able to and hit him with the Hidden Power of Fire, which will be very nice. Otherwise, Magneton and Primate form a very nice bolt switching core. Um, outside of Latios, Thunderous, and Gengar and Scyther, his team is actually pretty slow. So I can hopefully pivot around a lot to keep momentum on my side of the field. I did decide to go with Eviolite over the uh, something like Choice Scarf or Choice Specs. Just because if he happens to run a physical Latios, his best option, if he doesn't have uh, Earthquake, will be something like Waterfall, I guess. I don't think he'll have Earthquake, just because that's not that great of coverage against my team. Yes, it hits the Magneton, but I don't think he'll predict me to bring Magneton either. He would probably want something like Steelwing to hit Gardevoir, or he could even go with uh, Waterfall, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Zen Headbutt even would be pretty good coverage over the Earthquake. Now the next team member, once again, just another way to switch in here. This is actually gonna be one of our two dedicated leads. Uh, Rhyperior with this investment can live any hit from Hariyama, even Choice Banded. It can also live a hit from Megalatios, even at plus one. And um, furthermore, I can even live something weirder like a, a Choice Banded Sand Slash Earthquake. Um, I have a chance to live a Thunderous T Grass Knot if he happens to be timid, but um, yeah. Uh, Rhyperior, no speed here just because I would have to speed creep Hariyama. If he brings Hariyama, it'll probably be defensive anyway, and um, I won't have to worry about being taken out on one hit in that regard. Uh, we did go with Rock Blast over Stone Edge or Rock Slide just in case he tries to bring Substitute Gengar. I can break those substitutes. Um, or maybe a Focus Sash on Scyther, I can break that as well. Because I don't know how long I'll be able to keep Rocks up in this battle. He knows how weak his team is to Rocks, so he's definitely going to prepare for that, I'm sure. But uh, Mega Horn is just there to get a secondary hit off on the Mega Latios. It also hits um, the, uh, the Ferrothorn if he tries to switch into a Rock type move. Granted, Earthquake will work a little bit better there anyway, but I don't know why that situation would come up. Um, but I just wanted a solid way to get Stealth Rocks on the field, mainly, was my thinking right there. And the final Pokemon is Primate. This is Fisticles again, uh, going Choice Scarf, Adamant for the extra damage. This time we are using Punishment because that gets solid neutral coverage against his entire team, barring Hariyama Grand Bull. I did not want to rely on uh, Gunk Shot because that's not good coverage against his team as far as being locked into it. And it's also terrible accuracy. But if he happens to go call mine Latios, this will punish that option. Or if he tries to uh, set up with Thunderous in a nasty plot, I'll be able to punish that a little bit better without going for Stone Edge. Um, 
And this speed investment allows me to outspeed Choice Scarf, Volcanion, and anything slower. So if he brings Choice Scarf Thunder as T, he would outspeed him with that anyway. So once again, picking up a little bit more HP bulk in order to have a chance at living some weaker hits. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to have Primeape on the squad because then it allows me to threaten Ferrothorn and to a lesser extent the Gigalith and the Lickitung in case they try to sit around and be annoying. And if he tries to bring in Gengar, forgetting that Primeape gets access to a dark type move like Punishment, he will be a hurtin'. So um, this is gonna be the squad for this week and I'm actually about to battle him. I just got home from work, so I need to kind of collect my thoughts here first. But we are expecting the Megalatios, Volcanion, Ferrothorn, Thunderous T, Hariyama, and Gengar. So we'll see what he brings. We're definitely going to give him a good match, and we're going to do our best to end things in our favor. So hope you guys have enjoyed this team builder, and get ready for the match. Bye now. Okay guys, so thank you very much for watching my team builder. We can see here that Alex actually ended up bringing something completely different from what I expected him to bring. Uh, number one, we do not see Gengar or Thunderous, which that was great to see. Those are fewer threats for me to deal with. We do have to deal with uh, Volcanion and Latios uh, and Hariyama. They were all expected to an extent. I did not think he would bring Sandslash or Granbull, but it actually does make sense just giving Granbull's great neutral coverage against my team. Uh, here, the lead matchup really is just start with Primeape. If he leads with the Scarf Volcanion, I can outspeed it and do a good amount of damage to it that makes it easy to revenge kill. If he starts off with something like Latios, I can outspeed it and hit it with a U-turn. Um, and if he starts off with Granbull, I can get a boosted U-turn and see if he's either the Rattled version or uh, or Intimidate, which most Granbull and Leak format are gonna be Intimidate. But the idea is we just need to, number one, trap the Fortress and stop it from getting up entry hazards and then just soak up as many hits as we can with Rhyperior and Blastoise until we're able to take down his team, kind of Pokemon by Pokemon. So that's the game plan I went into this match with. Uh, and here we go, we're gonna go and see if that worked out. Now, um, in this battle at least, in leading off with Primeape, I do need to find out if his uh, Mega Latios has a Calm Mine or a Dragon Dance variant. I need to see what item his Volcanion has and I'm not really, and at the time I didn't really know what to expect from Sandslash, so I needed to see if it were a defensive or offensive set or that type of deal as well. He starts off with Granbull, which is great because I get Defiant, and I didn't put Gunk Shot onto Fisticles for this battle. I wish I had, I had a chance to one hit KO him. Um, just kind of depending, especially with the Adamant nature at plus one. But I didn't want to try anything here. We're just gonna go and get the free switch basically out into my Rhyperior. He goes for Play Rough. And looking at that damage, it looked like he was actually an offensive Granbull, because uh, this Rhyperia has so much defensive investment, I just didn't expect him to do that much. Uh, I could basically go for a free Earthquake here, or, or I could get up my Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks, like I said, pressure his team really, really nicely. So we're just gonna go straight for the Stealth Rock option. Uh, even though he goes out into his Hariyama here, Hariyama can't one-hit KO me, even if it has a choice ban from this range, or I'm sorry, at 184, it only had like a 50-50 roll to one-hit KO me with close combat with a choice ban. And I needed to find out what set he was, so I just stayed in. Turns out he's a little bit more of a defensive Hariyama, uh, so that does not do very much damage at all. And after the minus one from close combat, since his defenses are dropped, my Earthquake is almost a two-hit KO before he gets his leftovers recovery. Now, here, again, I could have just swapped out into, especially Gardevoir, would have been a very easy swap in there. But he actually goes out into his Sand Slash as I just go straight for Earthquake again. Uh, I figured I had a pretty good, I had a better chance for me to live his close combat than he had to live um, my Earthquake after another defense drop on his side. Uh, but since he went out into Sand Slash and I see the damage that it does from a zero attack investment right period, I know that this is an offensive Sand Slash. And I also know I can take an Earthquake from Offensive Sand Slash as well. Um, my idea here was Sand Slash's HP needs to be low enough so that Blastoise can come in and threaten it, but I'm not forced to click Scald because Volcanion has Water Absorb. It could get a free switch into the situation if I am forced to click Scald. Uh, so I really wanted um, Rhyperior to go down here with the Rocks up, or at the very least force the Sand Slash to switch out again. So 
Alex and I are going to get into this little back and forth where you see that he rapid spins every turn and I set up stealth rocks every turn. And we do this for three or four turns in a row. Um, as long as I keep the sand slash below right around 75% HP, then my Mega Blastoise can KO it with a Dark Pulse or an Aura Sphere. Um, and while he is spinning the rocks away and we're both getting leftovers, he's really just putting, um, he's allowing my Rhyperior to cover, recover its HP to a point where another Earthquake won't necessarily KO my Rhyperior. So uh, at the time, I thought he had the moves Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, and Knock Off were the moves that I assumed that he had, because that's what a lot of Sand Slash run. Turns out, he actually has Swords Dance. So on this next turn here, he's actually gonna go for Swords Dance, I believe, as he hits right at half HP, and I'm right below half HP. Um, and with Swords Dance up, it's a little bit more scary. Oh, no, we have one more turn of Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock shenanigans here. Uh, but with the Swords Dance up, it does force me to just go straight for the attack, because I didn't know um, how much either speed investment he had, I didn't know how bulky he was, and it puts a little bit more pressure on me, because then it can one-hit KO Rhyperior. Uh, I cannot switch anything in to a plus two Sand Slash either. Uh, I probably could have switched Blastoise in, but then he would be KO'd on the next one. Uh, so you see me fail my Stealth Rock there, because now he's going to get a chance to go for a Rapid Spin, and really... I should have just gone for another Stealth Rock here, because I think that would have helped out longer and helped out more so in the long run if I forced him to keep on going for a Rapid Spin. But like I said, I was afraid of him getting out of the range where I could ensure the KO with Blastoise with the secondary move. So we are going to go for Earthquake here as he gets rid of the rocks, which is nice. I can very freely go for moves against his team again, and unfortunately, that's going to enable him to be able to go for Earthquake. And even though I'm at a point where a, a standard Earthquake wouldn't KO me, Plus two doing double the damage basically is definitely going to KO Rhyperior. So I was really proud of Rhyperior's debut for my team. I brought him in the other weeks, but he never hit the field. He did a great job this time, um, soaking up the hit from Grand Bull, doing a great amount of damage to Hariyama, and leaving Sand Slash at half health. Now I can bring in Blastoise and very, it was not even, I didn't have to think about it really. I did take a little bit of time to make him like think about, oh, what is he gonna do? But I didn't have to think it was, just click the Dark Pulse. On the off chance that he goes into Latios, or Latios, excuse me, that'll do even more damage there. And here we see it is a very secure two hit KO. Uh, and that's only with my very meager special attack investment. Now he does switch back into the Sand Slash. I just switched to Aura Sphere here in case he tried to go in to the Ferrothorn, in case it was a special defense build. Um, I didn't want to necessarily deal with that. So uh, he's gonna bring in his Latios now and go for the Mega Evolution. And I really needed to see what type of Latios this was. So we're just gonna stay in here and click Ice Beam. And he goes for Psychic, and I did not expect Psychic. I definitely thought he was gonna try to set up on me. Um, or rather, I go for Dark Pulse here, excuse me. Uh, I didn't expect Psychic. Psychic, I, I just really thought he would go Dragon Dance and have three attacking moves, or maybe two attacking moves in Roost. But since he has Psychic, we have an Assault Vest Gardevoir to swap directly into the situation. He goes for Hidden Power Fighting, expecting me to switch out to something, namely Weavile maybe to take the Psychic. And even though he has Shadow Ball with an Assault Vest, the Shadow Ball does negligible damage, and we're able to take out the Latios with a Moon Blast, and that means Latios did not get an opportunity to set up on my team at all, which is amazing. Uh, I really thought I was going to be forced into a position where we Weavile was going to have to take out the Latios. Now I do have Focus Blast on Gardevoir, but that is a secondary option. There is no reason to risk that if I don't have to. And we're gonna go out into Magneton here. I figured he would set up Stealth Rocks, but since he goes for Power Whip and I see the damage, looks like he's an offensive Ferrothorn. Uh, Cause this is an Eviolite Magneton. And uh, yeah, that was actually a pretty decent amount of damage for a resisted move. Now the Eviolite, since it boosts my defense, also saves me from the knockout here from Bulldoze. And Alex actually made a little bit of a snafu in his um, EVs because he thought he could outspeed me after minus one speed, even though I'm a max one Magneton. If he had put some speed on the Ferrothorn, he definitely would have had a chance to do that. Uh, but I don't think he had any speed on his, so he wasn't able to do that. Now, I didn't have a good reason to swap anything in here. I just left my Magneton in because I didn't know that Volcanion was scarfed at this point. And so that, as far as I knew, that might have just been a speed tie. But now I'm going to go into Blastoise here. I also could have gone into Gardevoir, but I did want to save Gardevoir just in case I needed it for the Hariyama. 
but since uh, I figured he would be switching out here, I didn't have a reason to go for Dark Pulse anymore because the Latios is down, so I went for Aura Sphere instead. Nailing Hariyama on the switch, which is fantastic, and because I am invested in speed, I am able to outspeed Hariyama and KO it with another Aura Sphere. So I was very pleased to see that. Uh, I was I had to go for Aura Sphere there just because if he tried to swap in back into the Volcanion, he would get the Water Absorb. Um, he could have tried to swap out into Gramble on the Aura Sphere, but then he would have been in a position where he's getting hit by a Scald. So uh, here we're going to go out, Trace his Intimidate. I needed to see what type of damage he would do to my Gardevoir, because Gardevoir is very bulky. And I knew he was offensive, um, but wow, that did a lot of damage after the Intimidate. For a second I thought that was a crit, but it was not. Man. Um, now the Intimidate is going to force him to switch out, which is pretty nice. Um, and we're just going to go straight for Moonblast, and Volcanion comes in. And we do see that Moonblast connects, and it gets a very crispy special attack drop. Now that special attack drop did matter in the sense that uh, with the minus one special attack, my Gardevoir is actually going to live the Sludge Bomb. And since I live Sludge Bomb with minus one special attack, that tells me that he's Scarfed. I actually thought he was Specs for most of the battle. But uh, we didn't really get a good chance to see his damage output because uh, he was kind of pressured off the field. Now, uh, with that, that means that Gardevoir is alive to kind of play another day here. Grand Bull is bulky enough that it's able to survive a uh, Moonblast, but now with that extra damage on Grand Bull, that means I don't even have to go out into Weavile. I can just go back out into Blastoise, live any hit, and just click um, Scald, and that's going to finish off Grand Bull. Now the Sludge Bomb that hit my Gardevoir, since I got the special attack drop, that probably affected Differential. I imagine that the um, Differential would have been 2 instead of 3, but I think the result of the battle would have still been the same. So as far as how this battle turned out, it was really decided in the matchup. Uh, from the start, me planning for Volcanion, Megalatios, Thunderous, Hariyama, and Gengar, and then for him to bring four of those Pokemon, whereas I believe he, for him, he was planning for my uh, Rotom cut form, the Volcarona, and the Garchomp. I only brought three of the things he was expecting, whereas he brought four of the things I was expecting. So just from a sheer team building perspective, I had the advantage there. And that's really where I think the match was won. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching the Eternity City Enders as we chalk another victory up on the board here very excitingly. Now, um, next week's matchup is actually up against Shroom Raver and the um, and his team, which that I'm that is going to be a very interesting match. Shroom has drafted a very nicely balanced team overall, so it's going to be a little bit tough to prep for, but we can definitely give him our best. So in the meantime, thank you very much, Kelly, for the quality on this video. I do apologize for it being up late. Alex and I had a tough time coordinating our schedules and he didn't have internet one night and it was just a pain, but we finally got it done and I appreciate everyone's patience as I was getting this battle video out the door. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you all later. Bye bye now.